Sean Irvin fell just short of 100, while Jack Shantry claimed four wickets as neither Hampshire nor Worcestershire could take control of their LV County Championship match on the penultimate day at the Aegeus Bowl. Only 8.5 overs have been possible on the first two days of this contest, but the sun was out on the third morning and Jimmy Adams continued where he'd left off on day one. He started this day with 32 of the 37 runs on the board for the loss of three wickets and he was soon finding the boundaries as he opened up his season's account with an impressive looking half century which occupied only 63 balls and included eight fours. Adams had something of an up and down summer last year but he was starting this one on the up. He was well backed up by Will Smith who was looking to impress on his Hampshire debut having made the move south from the champions Durham in the winter. He put on 64 runs for the fourth wicket with Adams at the partnership ending when the Hampshire skipper fell into a well-planned trap as he flicked Chantry straight to Alexei Cavezi to go for 67. Another debutant was in next in the form of the former Sussex man Joe Gatting, but his innings lasted only one ball as his decision to remove the bat came too late as he fed Tom Cole Cadmore a catch. The slipper was soon in action again to get rid of Smith for 29 as Chantry continued to impress to put his side in the ascendancy again. When Irvin and Adam Wheater joined forces, Hampshire were in some bother on 105 for 6 and a couple more wickets at this stage would have seen them in deeper trouble but Irvin put the batting difficulties behind him as he quickly found his feet with some attractive drives. Rita too played his part either side of the lunch break as this pair began the fight back. Over the years, the former Essex man has shown that when he hits a ball, it stays hit and he was certainly finding the middle of his bat here. Irvin is now in his 10th year as a Hampshire player and he has rarely let them down. As the afternoon wore on, he took on all comers, playing with timing and power off the front and the back foot as his partnership with Wheater began to develop into something rather meaningful. Any thoughts that Worcestershire might have had of batting before tea was soon diminishing as the runs were coming freely from both batsmen. Indeed, three fours and a single Chris Russell over carried Irving to his half century, which had occupied 67 balls. While some had struggled on this surface, he certainly wasn't one of them as he took the total to 198, made at four runs per over. The partnership was ended on 93, made in 23 overs, when Wheater on 35 rather awkwardly turned a ball from Gareth Andrew to Cavezi at mid-wicket. One wicket has tended to bring another one quickly in this contest and that happened again when Matt Coles drilled a ball from Moeen Alley back to the bowler who clung on for a wicket with his 10th ball of the campaign. So it was left to David Balcombe to take his side beyond 200 for their first bonus point of the summer. The number 10 produced some lusty blows as the Worcestershire attack huffed and puffed but were unable to blow the Hampshire house down. 38 were adding in 10 overs for the ninth wicket with Balcombe striking 23 of them. This edge behind saw the back of him as Chantry struck for a fourth time. With Noel and Richardson, the likes of Chantry have a lot to carry on their shoulders this summer. He and his fellow bowlers would have been disappointed that they weren't able to finish off the inning sooner. Instead, Irvin now used a long handle to take on the visitors, especially Chantry, who he twice deposited over the ropes as he raced into the 90s. With James Tomlinson holding up his end, 100 was nearing, but a missed time pull ended up in the hands of Cavezi. Irvin departed for 93, but he had seen his side to a score of 263, in which Chantry claimed 4 for 68. So into the final session, and one in which Hampshire would have been hopeful of making inroads into the Worcestershire batting order. Instead, they found Matt Pardo and Daryl Mitchell in a defiant mood. There wasn't really the stroke play of earlier, but that wouldn't have been expected against the new ball, being delivered by an experienced and well-disciplined Hampshire attack. For the most part, both Worcestershire openers were equal to it as they opened up with a steady stand of 47. That was broken by Coles, who performed so admirably on loan in Southampton at the tail end of last season. He found the edge of Pardo's bat after an hour at the crease as he departed for 19. That wicket pumped up Coles some and a quick delivery struck Mitchell rather uncomfortably. Thankfully, he was soon okay. 
He had a moment of fortune soon afterwards, but as the evening wore on, he and Ali batted with authority in what was a promising partnership for this pair. Of course, the next few weeks will be important for Ali, the Worcestershire number three. He's one of a number of players hoping that a good start to this summer will see him lifted into the England team for the forthcoming Test Series. He was the player of the season in 2013 and he started this one well too as he and his captain added a largely untroubled 56 runs for the second wicket in a game which is most likely going to be all about bonus points. To that end, Worcestershire will be pleased with their work to date. They will go again on the final morning on 103 for one, trailing by 160 runs with Mitchell on 44 and Ali still there on 27.